guys, so today we are making an Elsa doll cake and this dress is inspired by the dress that she wears in Olaf's Frozen Adventure. It's a short film that airs right before Coco. It feels like a feature film though. <laughs> now I love the way this dress looks. She looks like a snowy aristocrat. And this cake's actually what's gonna kick off my holiday content. So let's get started. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is bake your cake. I baked my cake in my Wilton's doll cake pan. Now all of my doll cakes start out the exact same way, so if you want an in-depth look at how to start a doll cake, there is a video for you in the description box. Once I finished the doll cake basics, I covered my entire cake with fondant. Now placing the fondant on the dress is the easy part. Instead of smoothing out the bottom, I just let the ruffles fall wherever they did, and then I enhanced them with my hands. I just took my fingers and placed them underneath the fondant to emphasize the folds so that the dress looks fuller. You know like it has like that dress cage underneath. You know, have you ever been to a quinceanera? Yeah, kind of like that. Now, after I was finished with that and I was happy with my folds, I cut a slit into the top of my cake, pushed down the fondant and then placed in my Elsa doll. I wrapped her waist with a little bit of fondant just to seal her in. And then I rolled out some more of my fondant, the gray, blue, purple, gloopal. <laughs> Let's go with gloopal. I just created a hexagon shape and placed that onto her chest and glued it with a little bit of magic sauce. You want to make sure that this piece covers her chest as well as the fondant that you place to seal her in. Now using my IKEA paring knife, I'm going to cut away the excess and then just close the seam with my fingertips. I always try to keep my face out of these shots of my hands, but my upper lip and my nose, uh, they decided to make an appearance. <laughs> and now, this ain't about you. And using some fondant tools, I just created some texture kind of wanted to look like it was bunching up at the seam where her waist is. And I'm also making sure the texture blends with the folds and the ruffles I created at the bottom of the dress. Now, I'm not really worried about the back of this because there's going to be a white cape that drapes down the back of the gown. It's going to look fabulous, you guys. Yo, she's going to look like a queen. And with a lighter shade of fondant, I'm just going to roll it into a very long triangle. I wanted this triangle to be long, very narrow, and I'm not going to cut off the bottom of the triangle just so I can adjust it later on. Now notice I'm not placing the triangle on the cake completely straight. I want it to look like it has a sort of movement of fabric. And I rolled out some more of the glupal fondant. Glupal actually comes from the root Latin word glupetel, which means to be silly. Now with this piece of glupal fondant, I'm actually gonna cut it into a very long sailboat. It's just a large triangle. None of the lines on it are straight and it kind of curves the same way that a sail on a sailboat does. Now I'm gonna attach this to the sides with a little bit of magic sauce. And I'm gonna take the front edge of the sail and just glue it to the back to make it look like the fabric is moving. I want like movement. You know, like when your mom would like hang a bed sheet in the backyard and it would just like dry in the wind. Do you remember that? From the simpler time? No, you don't. Cause you grew up with washing machines and dryers. I'm sorry, I'm not fancy like you. Damn millennials. <laughs> I'm a millennial so it doesn't make any sense. I'm just going to use my fondant tool again to make it so that the panels don't look completely flat and that they're actually mixed in with the bottom layer of fondant. Now I'm not going to work on the back again. There is a cape coming. So now we have to add some snowflake decoration. Do, 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 do. This part sucked! <laughs> now originally I was going to use my generic sort of snowflake fondant cutters. Elsa's snowflakes are very crystal looking and they're very rigid. But this is all rounded. So when I realized I couldn't use it and then I had to do it by hand, I got really sad. <laughs> I rolled out an even lighter shade of glupal fondant and I let it sit out for about two hours just so that it'd be easier to work with. And while it was sitting out, I was just sitting at my desk like contemplating how I could get somebody else to do this for me. But then I just did it. 
uh, did it myself. Now I just created different triangle and diamond shapes that were gonna go on the front of the dress. Now because I left it out, none of the triangles morphed when I was cutting them out. And I actually didn't use a pattern. I did all of this freehand because creating a pattern meant that it's just even more time spent on this. And I didn't want to spend any time on this. <laughs> Don't let all of the laziness that you are compromise your vision of what it is you're trying to execute. Is that a life lesson? It's a cake lesson for sure. Now the smaller pieces take so much more time. So if you're gonna try and recreate this, be very, very patient. Inhale, exhale deeply. Do some meditation. Drink some magic sauce. Now with some of the larger pieces, I wanted to add some more detail to them. So I took a darker glupal color and I just added some more diamonds and triangles to the larger pieces of the snowflake. And voila, our snowflake-ish masterpiece is done. Now that the hardest part is over, I did add some diamond shapes to the sides of the dress just to give it a little bit more detail. Now in Elsa's dress, there's this small magenta detail on the top of the gown and I really liked it so I decided to emphasize it on my gown. I cut out a magenta diamond with my pizza cutter and I placed that on top of some more magenta fondant. I cut out a second diamond and this one was a little bit bigger. Put that onto some, I think it's like a slate blue just to give my diamond a little bit of a trim. Then I adhered that to her chest and using some more of that baby blue glupal fondant. I can't believe I'm using that word. <laughs> I added some more of her sharp snowflake details uh, to the bust area, just so it matches the panel on the front of the gown. I wanted this dress to look as winter as possible and winter always I think of like Jon Snow and like fur like all up in this area and Elsa's dress has the fur all up in this area too so I rolled some white fondant into this like I don't even know what shape this is it's like a slug shape what is this and I just attached it to the top of her dress with some magic sauce I needed two of these slug shapes, one to go on the right and then the other one on the left. Now using some fondant tools, I'm just going to take these shapes and make them look more like fur shapes than slugs. No one's wearing slugs. Slugs are not in season. Now once I was happy with that, I rolled out some more white fondant and I didn't want this tube to be consistent. So I'm actually using my fingers to make some places thicker and other places thinner. Now with a paintbrush and some more magic sauce, I moistened the bottom of the dress just so I could stick my tube into, nope, create a different sentence. <laughs> I just attached my white fondant to the sticky parts. And I'm just gonna work my way around the entire bottom of the gown. And then using some more fondant tools, I did the exact same thing. Just added texture to make it look more like fur. The technique I'm using is called making it up as I go. <laughs> the more texture you add, the more it looks like fur and not just this ugly piece of fondant. Now once I was happy with it, I actually did add some very small snowflakes with my fondant cutter. I also added some white gumballs and some white sixlets. Now our gown is finished, but we have one more thing to create because Elsa, Elsa is queen E. Is it this one or is this one? I think it's this one. All right, well, we'll flip it in post if it's not. So I decided to make her a very tiny crown. Now with my light glurple fondant, I cut out a very thin strip and glued the ends together with some magic sauce to create a ring. This is gonna be the bottom of the crown. I also cut out some diamond shapes to go on the front of the crown and I adhered them with a little bit of magic sauce as well. I let it sit for about 20 minutes just to set up and then placed it on her head and voila. Y'all heard of Queen B? Here's Queen A. Voila, our Elsa doll cake is done. This looks dope. I love the cape. I love all the details I created. It took so much time, you guys. I think it's beautiful. I would not do this cake again though because that detail, 
Ooh, I'm gonna put it behind me. That's what she said. You wanna see more Frozen stuff? I created an Anna doll cake. I also have another Elsa doll cake on my recipes channel. I really like this doll cake, but I think I'm gonna update it for Frozen 2. I've made this doll cake a long time ago and I've learned so much since then. I also have an entire playlist of Frozen themed treats to help you throw a Frozen party. And I'm curious, did you guys see Coco? What did you think? I was so sad. I was in the theater at the end. It just like, it felt like a ton of bricks just hit my heart. Did you like it? It was so emotional. Make sure you hit that notification button so that you can see exactly what I'm creating in real time in the community tab. Or you can follow me on Instagram. That's pretty popular too. Don't follow me on Facebook though. I always forget to update it. It's sad. Social media life is hard on one person. But there's only so much I can do. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you. I will see you very soon. Peace!